So OpenAI just announced that users will be able to fine tune their GPT 3.5 model. And looks like the ability to fine tune GPT 4 will be coming in a few months. According to OpenAI, early tests have shown that a fine tuned version of GPT 3.5 Turbo can match or even outperform base GPT 4 level capabilities on certain narrow tasks. So, what is fine tuning? You remember that movie Rain Man? When the guy was really good at math, he was really fast at calculating stuff, had this like supernatural ability to remember numbers, but he kind of struggled with other tasks. I kind of think of fine tuning as a little bit like that. Basically, fine tuning means specializing a model to some specific task. If you want a customer service chatbot that answers questions about your particular product, you can fine tune a model to do that. If you want a computer game character, a non-player character that's that feels like he's really part of that world, you can fine tune a model to do that. Now, fine tuning can have some downsides. Basically, you should assume that there's going to be some degradation of some of the abilities outside of what you're fine tuning for, outside of what it's specialized to do. For example, if you fine tune a model to answer as if it was an orc chieftain in your Dungeons and Dragons game, it may lose its ability to argue the finer points of post-colonial feminism. So what are the advantages of fine-tuning a model? Well, there are quite a few. One is it can enable a very custom, very controlled experience. If you need the LLM to say specific things, to not break character, to not say things like as a large language model, well, then fine-tuning allows you to custom shape what it says and does. As OpenAI puts it, improved steerability, reliable output formatting, and custom tone. This is going to be extra important places where, for example, you're doing some sort of code completion or composing API calls. You want ChatGPT, GPT 3.5, whatever, to output the code in a very specific way. You don't want it starting with like, oh, sure, I can help with that. And then doing the code, you want it just to code or whatever format you're looking for. Or if it can't do it, you want it to throw up some specific error message that you can kind of flag, but you don't want it making up something brand new to answer your prompt. The other big advantage is the cost. So you can slash the cost of using the LLM for your particular tasks. Now, it's important to note that the actual cost per 1,000 tokens is going to be bigger than on the base models. It's six to eight times higher than the base model. But since you no longer have to give it, you know, let's say multiple examples, you don't have to teach it to output the, the proper format every single time. There's going to be some use cases where using the fine-tuned models is going to save a lot of money. So where is this going to be used? Well, customer service is going to be huge. Email chatbots, et cetera, this can be used very effectively. And you have to worry about it making up some uh, offensive crap on the spot and making your customers mad. Things like language translation. You can force it to respond in a specific language. So whatever the prompt is, it responds in that language and it translates that and translates that prompt into whatever language you want it to. So for education, this will be massive for things like tutoring, for learning, for coaching, for therapy, stuff like that. For gaming, like remember our evil orc that's hopelessly stuck in his ways? The entire backstory of the realm could be given to all the characters and then each would be ready to respond in character individually, but they would all have sort of like the same backstory. If you want them all to know something like this land is getting invaded, they would all know about it so they can respond appropriately to any questions that you might ask. Fine tuning can be used in legal research, for example. Remember that lawyer that used ChatGPT in court and it cited a bunch of fake cases? He got into a lot of trouble for that. Fine tuning would be able to help with that. One thing where I think personally this is going to be used is where, you know, if you have certain AI agents where you have multiple instances of ChatGPT that are kind of working together to achieve a mission. For example, you have one that's making decisions, one that's writing little scripts. Maybe you have one as the base model and one as a fine-tuned model that's specialized in doing that specific thing that it needs to. Now, now that I think about it, I'm almost certain that we're going to see a model that is fine-tuned to produce prompts for another model, for another base model. Basically something that you teach to just produce like the perfect prompts every single time based on whatever input you have that you needed to take into consideration. So two couple other places where fine tuning can help according to OpenAI, high quality results, then regular prompting, ability to train on more examples that can fit into a prompt. So this is interesting because so basically oftentimes when we're using these LLM models, there's something that is referred to as, for example, few shot learning or zero shot learning. Shot means examples, basically. So few shot means you give it some examples as what you want the output to look like. And sometimes a few will do, but sometimes you get better responses when you provide 100, 200, 1,000 different examples for it to go off of. So that's one way to kind of get around it. Basically, you can fine tune a model and use, you know, 1,000 examples to really fine tune exactly what, what you want the output to be. So token saving is due to shorter prompts. Again, you're, you're training it. It's almost like custom instructions, but for like the whole model. And so, so there's, you're using less input tokens. You're using less output tokens. 
and lower latency requests. So basically you're getting the answer back faster. So here they're saying how uh, fine tuning can be good for specific applications, but that's not always worth the time and effort. They're saying first get good with prompt engineering, prompt chaining, breaking complex tasks into multiple prompt, multiple prompts, excuse me, and function calling. By the way, function calling is not going to be available for training these or fine tuning these models. So their main task for which our models may initially appear to not perform well, but with better prompting can achieve better results. Iterating over prompts and other tactics has a much faster feedback loop than iterating with fine tuning. And so the use cases where they think it's going to be very good is so specifically when you, when you have to set the style, tone, format, et cetera, like kind of we talked about improving reliability. So for customer service, where you really don't want it to say the wrong thing, correcting failures to follow complex prompts, handling many edge cases in very specific ways and performing a new skill or task that's hard to articulate in a prompt. This might be something like trying to copy a certain style of writing. Like if somebody has a very specific style, you know, the more sort of examples you give it, the better the outputs is likely going to be, but that might be difficult with sort of the base model. So something like this, you can give it, I assume you can probably give it whole books worth of writing styles and then train on that. One high level way to think about these cases is when it's easier to show, not tell. And another scenario is where you need to reduce costs and or latency without sacrificing quality. And then they have a little bit of a uh, fine tuning steps, kind of like a brief tutorial. So basically where we prepare the data, we're going to be feeding it, upload the files using your API key. We're going to create the training file and, and then we're going to be using that sort of new model that we created with our, with our ID. And so I think a lot of this is going to depend on the cost structure of this. So you're paying, let's say seven times more per thousand tokens, but you're saving money on how much tokens are going back and forth potentially. So it sounds like there's, I mean, obviously there's going to be some use cases where this is going to be great and for a lot of the other stuff might not be. So I feel like I don't see a current need for me to use anything like this right now, but maybe, maybe in the future, there'll be some specific case where this would work. Obviously, if this was much cheaper than running the base model, this would be a big deal. Like if you can train the model to do the thing that you want it to do and have it cost a lot less than, you know, let's say GPT-4, that would be excellent. But that's not in the cards right now, unfortunately. But I'm sure as we see more and more people testing this thing out and, you know, publishing their use cases, we're going to see specific use cases where we're going to be like, of course, this is great for that. Why didn't we think of that? Curious to know what you think. If you have something that you're going to use it for where you think is going to be like the perfect use for fine tuning instead of the base model, please let me know. And again, that can be for GPT-5 3.5 Turbo or later for GPT-4. And they also have two sort of of the much cheaper models, DaVinci-002, Babbage-002, whereas you can see here, the cost per thousand tokens is much, much less than sort of like all the other ones. So maybe if you have some specific use cases for that, I'd love to hear it. Let me know in the comments. And my name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.